What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about using Edison to chop samples within FL Studio. Edison is the new wave editor as part of FL Studio 7 and it's a vast improvement on the old editor and I think that my need for Adobe Audition is pretty much gone away with this particular new feature because as I'm going to show you it's very very easy to chop wave data with this particular wave editor. My starting point today is just a basic project with a simple drum pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start Edison. The way I'm going to do that is by going to the mixer, going to uh, a channel, let's say channel 7, or insert 7, and then saying select Edison. And I, I know it's off the screen so you can't see that. With Edison loaded, uh, I can then start using it. If you don't put Edison in a specific mixer insert, it will go to the master. And maybe that's what you want it to do. It's, it's really on you to determine what's best for you there. But do be aware that any, any effects that come after Edison in the chain will affect what you hear when dealing with Edison. In other words, if I put a delay after this, anything I play in Edison is going to go through the delay before I hear it. So you may not want that and you need to be aware of that. Now that I have Edison loaded, what I'm going to do is go ahead and drag some data into there and I have my Windows Explorer open and I'm just going to drag an MP3 over. This MP3 is loading and uh, we're looking at the spectral mode I'm going to hit S and go to the more familiar waveform mode. And before I continue, I just want you guys to take notice of the title here. It's taken on the title of the file that I dragged over. And the reason why I want to point that out is because I know I'm going to get a couple dozen people saying, what was that sample that you used and who was the artist or something like that. So. What you see as far as the file name is all I know about this sample. Someone sent it to me and there you have it. Don't email me asking me any more information. Thank you. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and play and listen at the beginning and I'm probably going to chop the first four bars or so. So as it's playing I'm going to be counting off about four bars and kind of take a note of where it's going to uh, need to be chopped and I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to see. So now let's hear it. Now I'm highlighting a selection with a little bit extra on the end because I know that my loop point's going to be in there somewhere. And I'm going to hit the end key to zoom into that particular selection. Before I go figure out the end, I'm going to trim the beginning. And you can see at the beginning there's this little bit of silence. And that's characteristic of MP3s. They tend to do that a lot. Uh, I think it's just part of the, uh, the formula for an MP3. It puts a little tiny bit of silence at the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to make sure my selection starts after that silence so I know that in order for this to loop properly my end is going to be somewhere in this area but I'm not sure exactly where what I'm going to do is play the sample and then in my head I'm going to start counting beats and when I figure out where it's going to where the end has to be so that it loops properly then I'll stop and I'll zoom in and I'll set the ending point for the for the selected range <laughs> So it's right, right about there. And as I zoom in, I can set that exactly where I need it. Now those of you who have chopped samples in the past probably recognize the way these, these peaks happen and how those are usually hits that you can use to visually guide you in, in chopping. And that's just all that I'm doing here is that I know that that peak is the beginning of a of a beat and I want to end about right there. 
So if I loop this particular section by clicking the loop play button, I'm going to let it loop through back to the beginning and see if there's any gaps or if it's too short or what, and hopefully I got it right on. sounds okay to me and there we have the the selection that I want to use at this point I need to get that selection out put it in a channel in the step sequencer and if I put both of these on the screen so we can just see um, what I'm going to do is use this button here which drags the selection out of Edison and drops it into a new channel or into an existing channel as well but in this case I want it to be a new channel so I'm going to drag and you can see the icon showing me the waveform and drop and it's created a new channel and inside of that channel is the loop that I just selected and just that loop if I had no selection like this in Edison no selection and I drag this out it would just drag the entire the entire waveform which is the whole song which I didn't want so now I can go in here and work with just just the uh, the loop portion next I'm going to right click on the loop and select edit which is going to replace what's currently in Edison with just the loop from this channel. Edison is more like a workspace. You should picture it as kind of like a temporary working area that you have, not like you're live editing the wave. In other words, I've loaded this Flashpoint channel here into Edison, but if I change this by reversing it, chopping it, cutting it, removing some silence, it doesn't change the original. It just is like a working area where I work and then I can save that or I can drag it back in after I've made my changes. So if you think of it as a work space, a work area, it'll make your understanding of it come much quicker. Now that I have the loop in here, I can do several things. I can start slicing and dicing. Um, and one of the things I want to show you is how you might slice a one hit with Edison so here I have uh, I don't know this hit here at the end and I'm going to select it and just play it so it's like a uh, a snare then I'm going to drag it and I'm actually gonna I'll drop it at the top here just so it's a little different and if we look at it well now I have a snare and you can see how you can take let's say a drum pattern in here and just start cutting out your instruments you know you have a, a two bar drum pattern that you like cut out the snare cut out the kick cut out a hat find your you know little spots and you've got a kit you've got a drum kit really easy for this demo though I just want to show you some basics of chopping I'm going to zoom out and now I'm going to start chopping up this particular loop first I'm going to insert an FL slicer channel just temporarily we're going to we're going to get back to the FL slicer but I just wanted the channel there to be ready what I'm going to show you though is how I'm going to take some parts of this and arrange it in the step sequencer. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to grab this first hit right there. Then I'm going to drag that into a channel. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to rename that channel. call it hit one. I'm going to find another hit. 
probably this part. And I'm going to drag that into another channel. Drop it in there. Rename it. Call it Hit 2. Then there was one more part that sounded really good. This part. So let me go in and just select it more clean by zooming in. Okay. Now I'm going to drag this out, drop it, and rename it. Hit 3. Now I have a basic drum pattern already defined in another, another pattern here. And so now I'm going to throw these hits in here. Like so. And play it together. You can hear that I can sequence it really easily that way. But I'm going to show you another method using the slicer. So I'm going to delete these guys out. Because I think the slicer is much easier when it comes to this sort of chopping. And I'll show you how I do that in a second. Okay, so now I want to use the slicer. So I'm going to have to select my parts again. But I want to show you the, the spectral view this time. Because I want to point something out. The spectral view shows you more clearly where these peaks would occur. And using the spectral view, I think, will yield better results. So you might want to try it and see how it works for you. For example, here I'm at the beginning of the sample, and I can see very clearly where that snare hit comes in right here. So I know I want to select just this part. And once I select that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark it by pressing M. When I do that, it's going to ask me for a name, but I'm not concerned with the name right now, so I'm just going to hit Enter. And that's going to uh, call it Marker 1 for me. Then I'm going to go to the section just after Marker 1, and I'm going to select another part. That part there. I'm going to mark it. Then I'm going to select the next part. I'm going to mark it. Then I'm going to select the next part. Actually, I don't really want that part, so I'm just going to keep going and select the next part. I'm going to mark it, and so on and so forth. Now I could preview these, these sections and just keep marking the ones I want and not marking the ones I don't. So once I have some, some parts marked, if I zoom out, go back to the other view, You can see how they're they're set up here. And actually you will need an end marker. Like if I wanted to get this part, I might want to put an end marker right there. But I don't need that part right now. So you can see how I've marked up the various chops that I want to use in the slicer. And I'll just drag the this right into the slicer itself and drop it. And when the slicer comes up, you can see that it's cut the slices in here exactly as my markers indicate. And now if I play that on my keyboard, I can play those pieces individually across the keyboard. And that's one of the biggest draws to the power of the FL slicer. But I want to do my own arrangement here. So I'm just going to remove the auto arrangement it put in for me. And then um, 
I'm going to do just the same sequence I did earlier, but I'm just going to play it on my keyboard instead and record it into the piano roll. So there we go. And I could quantize this just to tighten it up a little bit. It looks okay. And there I have the same sequence as before, but I'm only taking up one channel instead of three. So there you have how to use the Edison Wave Editor with a regular sample channel. You, can, you saw how that we could take a loop, throw it in a sample channel. You saw how we could take a one shot, throw it in a sample channel. And you saw how we could slice our own pieces of a loop and throw it in an FL slicer and sequence all those pieces together to make something that sounds respectable. And uh, that'll do it for this tutorial. I do want to say that Edison is one of the new features of FL Studio 7. And if you don't have a copy, you should download your copy from the FL Studio website. And if you're not a legitimate user, and I know there's a number of you out there, um, I urge you to become licensed uh, owners of FL Studio. Because FL Studio, you get free updates for life. So I bought FL Studio back at version 3, and it's already version 7. I've gotten free updates the whole way. It was like one of the best investments I ever made towards my own musical uh, aspirations. So I urge you guys to do the same thing. I mean, software depends on people paying for it. And I know a lot of people are broke and they say they can't afford it. And, you know, I've been there. I understand what you're saying, but it still doesn't make it right. And there's some satisfaction in owning a piece of software that's worth so much more than what you paid for it. You know, so I don't really want to preach a lot, but with the, with the release here of FL7, I was thinking about how valuable this product has been to me for, for the investment I put in. And I would urge all of you to get that same value for yourselves. With that said, um, this is NFX saying, um, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.